guys. So the next set of simple machines we're going to take a look at are ones that are called the lever and the pulley. And so the lever and pulley are two more of the simple machines and we've already looked at a few of them and these are the last two because there's six in all. And so we're going to watch a quick video about the lever and then another quick video about the pulley and I want you to think about everyday examples that we'll find in life that have the lever and the pulley as part of them. And remember the lever and the pulley always its job is to make work easier so we have to use less force. Okay, so here is the lever. The next simple machine we're going to discuss is called a lever. A lever is simply a rigid object or bar that pivots around a fixed point called a fulcrum. A lever reduces the amount of effort needed to lift or move an object. Let's say you want to move this large rock. You can push it, but this rock is too heavy. To make it easier, you can use a lever. All levers have three parts. The first part is the object that is to be moved, called the load. You also need a fulcrum. That's the fixed point where the bar can rock back and forth. A log works well. And you need a bar, like this 2x4. The third part of a lever is the effort. That is the effort or force you need to move the load. When you put force on the opposite end of the lever, the rock moves. A lever is any bar that pivots around a fixed point or fulcrum. There are three kinds of levers. The first type of lever is called a third class lever. A good example of a third class lever is a rake. A third class lever has the fulcrum at one end, load on the opposite end, and the force in the middle. The next type of lever is called a second class lever. A good example of a second class lever is a wheelbarrow. On a second class lever, the fulcrum is on one end, the effort is on the opposite end, and the load is in the middle. Another example of a second class lever is a bottle opener. Here is the fulcrum on one end, the load is the bottle cap in the middle, and the effort opposite the fulcrum. The third type of lever is called first class lever. A seesaw is a great example of a first class lever. On a first class lever, the fulcrum is in the middle. The load is on one end, and the effort is on the opposite end. A crowbar is another example of a first class lever. Here is the fulcrum. The load is the nail, and the effort is applied to the opposite end of the bar. Okay, so for the lever, you know, they were using the words fulcrum and they were using the, um, and so when they talked about the fulcrum, whoops, misspell, um, when they were talking about the fulcrum, that should be a U there, it's hard to write with a mouse, um, whenever you were talking about the fulcrum, the fulcrum is, um, I always like to think of it as the point of pivot, okay, and so um, it's kind of like on that seesaw, the point of pivot is going to be right here because that's where the movement's going to take place. And so the where the item's going to be moving is where the point of pivot is. And I like to think of that as the fulcrum. The um, load, I always like to think of it as what you're trying to do. So if I'm on a seesaw and I'm trying to um, push my partner up into the air, then um, then my partner would be the load for me, right? And so and I'm the load for whoever I'm seesawing with. And so I always like to think of that as whatever it is I'm trying to do. When you saw that crowbar that was trying to pull that nail out of the wood, well the nail is what I was trying to pull out of the wood, so that becomes my load. Okay, and so the load, ooh, big L. Um, so the load is what you're trying to do with your lever. And then the effort, that's where the work is being done. And so you guys saw on the example with um, the wheelbarrow, 
the handles of the wheelbarrow, that's where the work is being done. That's where I'm placing the effort for the wheelbarrow so that I can actually make it do its job. And so on the wheelbarrow, the two handles that I hold on to and lift up on, that's going to be where my effort is going to be placed. Okay, so now we're going to get into the pulley, and that's our next, our last simple machine. A pulley is a simple machine that is made up of a wheel on a post with a rope or cable around the wheel. Pulleys can make work easier to do by changing the direction of a force. For example, a pulley is used to raise a flag on a flagpole or to lift heavy objects. As you pull down, you change the direction of the force that brings the flag up. That makes the work easier. This type of pulley is called a fixed pulley. Another type of pulley is called a movable pulley. By using one movable pulley, you can reduce the amount of force needed to use by one half. A pulley changes the direction or amount of force. Pulleys are used everywhere in the real world. A clothesline uses a pulley. So does a ski lift. Pulleys are also used on construction sites. Cranes use pulleys to lift heavy objects. Sometimes, people can join two or more pulleys together. Two or more pulleys together is usually called a block and tackle. A block and tackle is a system of ropes and pulleys used for lifting heavy loads. It makes it possible to lift a heavy weight over a short distance using a small force over a long distance. Okay, so as you saw in that video where we had examples of several different types of pulleys, we had fixed pulleys and block and tackles. One of the things that you can think about is on a um, fixed pulley, you basically just have one, it's just a simple pulley where the rope goes around a wheel and, air, wheel and axle and it turns allowing you to do the work with the rope and the rope is able to help you pull the load. Okay, on a black and block and tackle, it's going to be a system of pulleys where the ropes are going to go around them and there might even be several different ones. They might go around them twice. And so basically what that does is the longer the rope, the less effort that's needed, but it's able to pull a greater load. So again, it's over a greater distance, but it's still able to pull a large load, okay? And so that's the example of, there's a lot of different places that use pulleys um, to help lift a load over a great distance, okay? So what I want you to do today is I want you to think about some examples in everyday life where the pulleys and levers are used you can think of the ones that were shown in the video, and some of you might have your own examples of um, some of these simple machines in your home as well. Okay, so that's some of the things I want to want you to think about as you do your assignment. All right, good job, and I'll see you on the next one.